So please uh, join me in welcoming Senator Deb Fisher. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you so much. I'm, uh, I'm glad you all hung around here for the end of the day. It's, uh, it's hot. It's uh, sunny. I'm squinting at all of you. But it's uh, a great event. And uh, I understand it was very successful. So this has been a, a good day. I spent uh, the day this afternoon in Sarpy County, at the Sarpy County Fair. And it was just a fabulous time. I can tell you that county fairs are the same uh, no matter where you are in the state of Nebraska. I happen to represent uh, the largest legislative district in the state. I have 13 counties. It's about the size of New Jersey. So I'm used to traveling the state and used to being at a, at a lot of county fairs and seeing our young people and seeing them be active and responsible when they take on all the projects that they take to a county fair and then if they are successful there, they take it on to a state fair. You know, and when you go to these county fairs and you see these young people, you get concerned because what are we leaving them? What's going, to be, what's going to be our gift to future generations on the track that we're going on now? I would propose to you that they will be facing major challenges and maybe not with a lot of solutions before them, unless we change course now. And we need to make those changes. You know, as I was walking around uh, Springfield today at that county fair, I had a lot of people come up to me and share with me some of their emotions that they've been going through the last two or three weeks as they were watching what's going on in Washington, D.C. And those were the same emotions that I have felt for the last two or three weeks for the last couple of years. First of all, I was kind of excited about two or three weeks ago, because I thought we are finally going to have a debate in Congress. We are finally going to have a debate that's going to address concerns that I hear from people across this state. We're going to cut spending. We're going to debate capping spending. And we're going to have a serious discussion and debate on balancing the federal budget. We do that at the state level. Many states do. That's part of the job. You can't keep asking for more revenue and enlarging government. People can't afford it. You folks know that you can't afford it. We have to make those tough decisions. During my seven years in the legislature when I was first in, we had a, a growth in our budget of over 7 percent. Not good. But I can tell you this year in the legislature, and working with my colleagues, we were able to get that growth of government down to 1.5 percent. And it needs to go lower. We need to make those tough decisions. We need to set priorities. We do that here. That's important. But you know, my excitement then, it, it uh, faded away. Because we didn't have that debate and that discussion that I was hoping to hear in D.C., it didn't happen. It was business as usual. So, so then I got frustrated because you watch the maneuvering that goes on, you watch the lack of debate, the lack of serious discussion, the lack of looking for new solutions to these ongoing problems. So it was very frustrating. And I heard that today in Sarpy County. People, have, people are they're upset. They're frustrated. They're angry. And the third big emotion I heard was disappointment. Because we are just going with politics as usual. We are just seeing this runaway spending. We aren't seeing responsible decisions being made. We aren't seeing those cuts being decided on. And that's tough. As I said, we do it at the state level. It's tough. Because every time you cut a program, 
you are affecting somebody's life. But you have to go back to what you truly believe is the purpose, is the responsibility, is the duty of government. I happen to believe in a limited government. And at the state level, I think there are four responsibilities. Those would be public education, public safety, public infrastructure, and taking care of those who truly can't care for themselves. You have to determine what those priorities are and then base decisions off of that. And I think the same can and most certainly the same should be done at the federal level. And so I'm running for the United States Senate to get to Washington to make those decisions. And it's not going to be easy. Don't ever believe a politician who says they're going to go there and get it done in a year or two. It took many years to get in the mess we're in right now. And we all know that it's going to take many years to get out of it. But by gosh, we're never going to get out of it unless we get started. It's those tough decisions that make life difficult for all of us. We all have to make them. You know, I never planned to run for the United States Senate. I was encouraged by a number of people to look at, to look at running because I guess I'm, I'm not this career politician. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a rancher, I'm a small business owner, and I'm a citizen legislator. But I think that gives me a very good background to represent you in Washington. We all make those decisions. We make them in our everyday lives. And we need to make them and be forthright. As we move forward, it's easy, to, it's easy to get out there with sound bites and a lot of political posturing. That's, that's not me. I'm, uh, I'm not good at sound bites. I, better, I guess I've been told I better get better at it because um, people don't have the attention span to, uh, to listen to a policy discussion. You know, I think you folks have the attention span. You've been sitting here how many hours today? You're interested. You want to find out what's going on. And that's what all of our citizens need to do. We need to be engaged in this system because how we vote determines the future. You know, I happen to value saying Meaning, meaning uh, what I say and saying what I mean. And I think I have a reputation for that in the legislature and across the state. I'm uh, pretty upfront. I'm pretty blunt sometimes. But I think that's what Nebraskans value. We value hard work. We value common sense. And we have those conservative values that I think need to go to Washington. Again, I'd like to thank you all for being here today. It's been a hot day. I understand I'm the last speaker, so you're probably ready to be headed home. But I do thank you. I hope you stay engaged. I hope you pay attention to this Senate race, because it's an extremely important race. I'm here to beat Ben Nelson. That's, you know, that's, that's the purpose of this. I, um, I was angry. I was frustrated. I was disappointed. I was never excited with Ben Nelson's votes. He voted for Obamacare. I would not do that. He voted for the stimulus package. I would not do that. He voted for the bailouts. I would not do that. He has voted for increased spending his entire time there. That's not the way to run a limited government. Ben Nelson needs to come home to Nebraska. It's important, and it's recognized across this country 
that Nebraska is a pivotal race. You folks are going to make a difference. When you get out there and vote for the next United States Senator from Nebraska, we need to send a conservative, common sense Republican to the United States Senate. I would ask for your support. I would ask for your vote because I believe I am that common sense conservative and I believe that I am the candidate to beat Ben Nelson. Thank you.